Hey guys, how's it going? Welcome to another episode of Take Two on Soundstage, where I take a second look at the products already reviewed by Soundstage viewers. Now, today is a special one. We have the NAD C29A stereo amplifier, and we'll talk about why it's special in a minute. But this was written by Evan on March 15th, 2021. And you can read it by visiting soundstagehifi.com or by clicking on the link below this video. Now, I think this is a very special amplifier because if you go back a few Soundstage Take 2 series episodes that I did, we have the Purify amplifier. And this was an amplifier based on the Agentac module but I was really banging myself on the wall because you couldn't buy it. Um, it was an amplifier that sounded so good and I really wanted to buy it, but even I could not buy it. In fact, after that review, I asked the soundstage, uh, you know, the headmaster, Doug Schneider, I asked him, hey, can I, can I buy one of these? And you know, you couldn't because this was basically a prototype amplifier meant to showcase what the Agintact module was capable of doing. Now, here we are with the NAD C298, which is based off the Agintact module, not one, but two modules. So left channel and right channel. And I believe the power supply is made by NAD with higher grade autofile components and stuff. Now this pushes out 185 watts into eight ohms and 340 watts into four ohms and it has a damping factor of 800. So it sounds very promising. Now, having heard the Purify amplifier, I had very high expectations for this amplifier. And I thought really hard and long about what I was gonna say about the sound and my experience with it, because it is really hard to describe a sound that is so neutral. Now. I'm gonna be honest, this is my third take on this you know, episode. And I did a third take because the first take was because of the audio issue, but the second take was because I didn't put a word that I really wanted to put in there. And that word is balanced. Now, neutrality to me is just too vague. A lot of definitions based on the person's experience, gear, matching, you know, graph, too complicated. What I want to focus is balanced. This amplifier to me sounds very balanced. Yes, it can drive many things, you know, many speakers, but so can a lot of other amplifiers. What is special about this amplifier? And there is certainly something special about it, but it doesn't give you a wow factor. In the beginning, when you listen to this, you don't just immediately go, wow, you know, the bass is incredible or the sound stage is incredible, the layering. So, no, none of that. In the beginning, all you, re you really hear is music. And I know that's a little bit odd because of course you hear music, Jay. It's, it's an amplifier it's supposed to make sound. Well, I mean it in a different way. I mean that it really gets out of the way and it doesn't attract any attention to itself. And I think the design itself is kind of, you know, catered towards that because it is black. It is simple, black chassis, just very, very plain looking. And it really doesn't draw itself, you know, in terms of looks, 100%. And the sound matches exactly that. There is no drawing factor. The bass is balanced, the treble is balanced, the mid-range is balanced, all across. Meaning not one element in the music, in the spectrum of the hearing frequency, does it you know, overtake one or, one or the other. Everything is balanced. No treble is not elevated, bass is not elevated. Nope, the mid-range is not the center of the focus, like some amplifiers. Nope, the sound stage is not enormous, but it is, you know, pretty good. When you hear live music, you go like, wow, that's a, is this a tube amplifier? And then when you hear stuff with really, you know, good recordings, you get amazed by how 
well recorded the music is, but never about the amplifier. You never go, wow, the amplifier is doing such a great job. In fact, I reviewed many speakers with this amplifier and really helped me with the process because this amplifier is input output, nothing in between as close as possible. Of course, in a perfect world, you know, you would have that, but we don't, but this is as close as we get. And we didn't have that before, at least not in my journey. You know, we had a lot of powerful amplifiers, clean amplifiers that claimed to do so, but I don't think we ever had an amplifier like this one where it was almost seriously, at least to my evaluations, input, output, nothing in between. This is like a canvas. It is a white plain canvas that you can draw anything on. And what I mean is that because it's such a balanced amplifier and because it is so neutral, you can add a pre-amplifier that's tube or if you like a little bit of you know, high frequency or more air, you, know, you can add a pre-amplifier with those characteristics or pair up a speaker with those characteristics to get that and experience without the amplifier getting in the way. And a lot of audio files talk about the gear disappearing and the amplifier not taking any part in the coloration of sound in the music you hear. And while this was almost impossible before, at least to my journey and how I experienced gear, and then I've been through thousands of amplifiers and you know thousands and thousands of speakers, pre-amplifiers and gear you know, many different price points, but this, regardless of the price point, there was also always a sound the engineer was going for. There was always a sound attributed to the amplifier, regardless of the, you know, the manufacturer's claims of, you know, perfect neutrality, etc., etc. There was always a sound. To me, this amplifier is the closest thing I've ever encountered at any price point of being input to output, nothing in between. That's why it's such a hard review, yet so easy, because the sound characteristic I can describe to you is really based off of your speaker's capability, your pre-amplifier, and the rest of the system rather than the amplifier itself. And I know that may be a little bit discouraging. You know, you probably expected, wow, this amplifier should be incredible. Let's see what Jay has to say about it in terms of its sound characteristic. I hope he can describe it to, you know, a vivid kind of way so that you can understand what it sounds like. And all I can really give you is that this provides clean power, a white canvas that you can draw whatever you want onto the canvas. And this amplifier is a no brainer. I'm probably purchasing one because it is such a clean amplifier, yet the high frequency is not overpowering anything. It's not a bright, detailed amplifier that is you know, shield to the ears. In fact, someone like my friend Tujin, who has very sensitive ears to the high frequencies and are often bothered by the brighter frequencies, can listen to this amplifier without any fatigue. And of course, this is depending on the recording. It's always depending on the recording with these type of amplifiers. If the recording was recorded poorly or has those attributes, you know, brighter recorded music, then it will show that, it will not color that. However, you can fix this if, if you want to call it a fix by adding coloration with you know, a pre-amplifier that's known for its coloration and so on. I'm really interested in the pre-amp version of the Agintact and a DAC version of the Agintact and a speaker version of the Agintact because then you will finally experience what it really means to hear a system that has no coloration or the closest thing possible. Because this amplifier really showed me and you know really blew my mind in a different way. Not in a wow, this amplifier is incredible way, but this amplifier is incredible in a different way. Not like a tube amplifier, not like all the fancy gear that I've heard in the past, but more so in a way that what audiophiles have been talking about in, time, in kind of like a legendary folktale an amplifier that has no coloration. And even though all these amplifiers that have been measured incredibly well, that promise neutrality, and you know, some may argue that this is nothing new and there were amplifiers in the past that promised absolute neutrality. And I bet you that I've heard them because that was what I was chasing for ultimately in my experience 
to really grasp understanding of what neutrality is is something I've thought long and hard about. And I've heard most amplifiers, I will not claim all, but most amplifiers that you may comment down in the comment section, I have heard it. And not in a single time have I experienced neutrality or the perfect balance. There was something there. Yes, it was almost neutral, but not quite. There was always something there in terms of coloration, sound. And I know this because some of the music that I recorded is on Tidal, and I am able to decipher as close as possible to what the real thing is in a studio setting. And this really got me thinking and you know how I'm going to possibly describe the sound. If I were to describe the sound as bass, you know, it's tight, textured, you know, grunts in the bottom end, that is also true. Depending on the speaker and your gear, the high frequency, exactly the same thing. It really depends on the gear you match this with. And I've often heard reviewers, even Doug Schneider, um, having plugged his you know, Purify amplifier into his system and noticing almost no difference with he, his you know, really expensive amplifiers. Same thing with other reviewers on Soundstage and some of the other magazines I've read as well. And that really is, in my opinion, because this is a white canvas and you're drawing the rest of the picture with your system. It is a beautiful thing. It is something that we did not have before uh, and now we do. And I truly believe that this is the next step you know, into something that is a little bit more evolutionary. And I don't think we had that in audio with amplification for a very long time. And I truly believe that this may be maybe not a big step, but maybe a small step towards that. And it really has all the connections in the back that you really need. It has balance, it has RCA, and it has a set of speaker binding posts. Yes, albeit the speaker binding posts could use a little bit of help. Um, at $2,000, I expect a little bit better quality in the binding post. But again, that is really nothing to complain about given the sound. Now I saved this for the last, but this is a class D amplifier. And I say, saved this for the last because a lot of people have attached stigma or um, you know skepticism with class D amplifiers. And I do as well. I'm not a huge fan of class D amplifiers. I never was. I'm actually quite, um, I don't want to say famous because I'm not. Um, I I'm quite known to be you know, a guy who doesn't like Class D amplifiers, who has that skepticism. And that's because I've heard a lot of Class D amplifiers in studios, you know, in my journey. And it never was something that I really appreciated, at least for my, uh, my personal liking. But Class D amplifications has gone a long way and starts to sound really, really good. And this is a prime example of that. This Class D amplification really doesn't sound like Class D amplification at all to me. Um, it doesn't have that, you know, upper you know, glare, it doesn't, you know, it has all the attributes of a class, Z, class A, B or class A amplifier, but better, like it's more balanced. So how can I possibly put this down for being a class D amplifier? I can't. In fact, if you don't really tell someone that this is a class D amplifier, I'm almost certain that, you know, even the most trained audiophile, and I don't, I'm not challenging anyone here, but you know, myself personally, and my friends who are you know claimed audiophiles and you know very enthusiastic about this hobby will probably not be able to tell a difference between this and a class a b design or a class a design in fact i myself in a blind a b test think that you know not that i have done it but i think that i would prefer this uh, you know given that the rest of the system is on par and really is a great you know system so given this i think just you know, for my review purposes, or even for my you know uh, studio work, and you know for the ultimate balanced you know sound and neutrality, I would personally have to purchase one of these in the future. So that's it for me. I think this is an incredible thing to have for two thousand dollars, and if not if not your main amplifier, certainly something that you should experience or you know, listen to at the very least. So that's it from me, thank you for watching. If this video was helpful to you in any way or form, then please click that like button and also consider subscribing to this channel. And also, I will see you guys on the next episode of Take Two on Soundstage. Until then, keep healthy. Take care.